Hey folks, welcome back to The Radical Moderate, where nuance isn't just tolerated, it's actually necessary and highly encouraged. Today's question is deceptively simple, all right? Are computers special? And also, more importantly and specifically, do they kind of have to be made up of electronics in order to compute? And a little spoiler alert, the answer is no. And that really changes everything. The non-electronic computer. All right, let's rewind. Imagine a computer made entirely of pipes, water, and pressure valves. No silicone at all. So no electricity, just physics. Kind of sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Well, it turns out that you can build a computer this way and not just a basic calculator, a full-on Turing complete machine capable of doing all kinds of uh, stuff that your laptop can do, at least in theory. Water flows, that's data, valves are like logic gates, and then the tanks of chambers are the memory. It's kind of slow, obviously, and it's massive. Bernardo Castrop joked that it would be the size of the moon, but it is real and it proves something very profound. Computation isn't just about the material thing that is doing the computation. It's really about the logic of the process. What is a computer really doing? So if we can swap electrons for water or even kind of mechanical levers, then what are we left with? You know, we're left with a bunch of patterns, with interactions, with conditional flows, and also symbolic manipulation. This kind of leads us into the uh, concept that we touched on in a previous episode, pan-computationalism. The idea that the universe itself may be computing at some level, not just your phone or your brain, but gravity, atoms, even, uh, you know, space-time itself. Everything in this view is computing its next state. So maybe Alan Turing didn't really invent computation. Maybe, you know, he simply discovered it, like Newton discovered the gravity, the laws of gravity, or Darwin discovered the theory of evolution through natural selection. So in this view, computation is fundamental to nature. The universe as a computer. So think about that for a second. A computer that's made up of rocks, air, electrons, or water still can compute if it follows some kind of logical trans, uh, transitions uh, from state to state. And in computer science, computation is really defined as a change of state, input and output following a certain set of rules. Basically, input and output following a language that has a certain set of rules. And if we extend that definition to its logical conclusion, in my opinion, I can call the universe a massive number of computations where any change of state, which is from one atom going from point A to point B, is following a certain set of rules, which are the laws of physics. So everything is computational at some level, and maybe the universe itself is one big computation with a big change of state being from Big Bang to either the Big Crunch or the Big Bang to the Big Freeze, as theorists of cosmology uh, have theorized. So if we assume this perspective, then every particle, every interaction can be described as information being processed. And this means that our universe isn't just made up of matter and energy. It's made up of information, which is what in physics we call structure. And that raises the stakes. But what is information really? So here's the philosophical curveball. Is information meaningful on its own, or does it really require consciousness to interpret it? Right? That's a kind of a deep question. You know, a tree falling in a forest may generate vibrations in the air, but is it really called sound if there's no one there to hear it? This is what George Berkeley said, right? Likewise, does a configuration of particles mean anything without an observer? to decode it and observe it. Does the DNA molecule, for example, carry information if no cell or ribosome is there to read it? Does a book have any meaning without a mind to understand the words written in it? As Dan Dennett used to say, poems are more than just ink on paper. 
So in short, does information exist independently or does it really need a mind in order for it to be meaningful or even be called information? That is a profound question. Closing thought. So are computers special? Well, not because they're made up of circuits and electrons and you know, wires. They're special because they mirror a universal truth that reality itself may be computational and it may be a dance of patterns and rules and transitions that we observe. But perhaps the meaning of that computation, why it matters, only emerges when consciousness enters the equation. Which really brings us a whole full circle to the next question that we'll explore in the next upcoming Episode, is the universe meaningless without an observer? Does consciousness really generate meaning or merely detect it? Until then, stay curious, stay moderate, and remember, even the simplest pattern that exists around us may hold the code to some much deeper meaning that we're not aware of. See you guys next time in The Radical Moderate.